Salam guys, I hope you're well inshallah. Today I'm going to be talking about my revert story. I know quite a lot of people have asked for this and I have made a brief one on my TikTok. But I'm just going to go into it in like more depth and talk about when I was younger and how like it all came about. Um, I'm sorry if it's not like all in like the best order but I'm just going to say it as it comes to my head kind of thing. Um, so basically I'll start off with when I was younger, when my biological dad was in my life. Um, he wasn't, I'm going to try not to, to say any too much bad things about him, um, but he wasn't the best of people. Um, he treated my mum very, very, very badly. There was times I remember when my mum actually had left him, um, he would threaten to come to the house and threaten to do stuff. My mum actually had to keep like knives around the house um because she was so scared of him coming there was times where he'd like stand outside the house and like if a window was open he'd listen to our conversations um i have memories from when i was very young um of having to leave the house quickly and my mom's told me since that she used to have to say like oh we have to like race to nanny and granddad's house like but that was actually when he was threatening to come like he just really wasn't a very nice person um he did pass away in 2016 so may allah forgive him and grant him jannah but um, yeah, he wasn't a believer or anything, but yeah, so he did pass away in 2016, but that's just a bit of a big, like a background on how he was as a person. I don't want to go into it in too much depth. There is more, but it's never good to talk bad on anyone. Um, so there's where the relationship wasn't really there with me and him and why it was such an amazing thing for my mum to do by getting rid of him and yeah, him being out of my life altogether. Um, I think he did try to keep contact up until probably I was about seven. Um, I think I saw him on and off, but there was, I think the last time that I saw him, um, me and my mum were at the shops and I saw him and I like hid behind her. Like it was proper not a good, uh, not a good relationship. And after that, he kind of just forgot anyway. He has enough other kids um, that he didn't really do much for either. But yeah, he didn't really care. But then... Alhamdulillah, that's when my dad uh, came into my life. So just for clarity, if you hear me talking about my dad in the future um, and you want to know what I'm talking about, because obviously some people get confused. Um, if I'm talking about my biological dad, I'll call him Dave because that's his name. And if I'm talking about my dad who's brought me up since I was a baby and who I'm so lucky to have and who has done everything for me since I was about one and a half, two, I'll say dad because he's my dad to me. I know there's been a lot of comments about, oh, like you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this. That's what I've done. Like, he is my dad. I Like, there was a time that was so special when he actually became my dad. I used to call him Tawik because his name's Tarek. I couldn't pronounce his name properly. But there was a time when we went on holiday. I can't remember where we were, but we were in the sea. And you know when you play that game where you, like, the kid, like, bounces to their mum and dad's knees in the sea kind of thing. And apparently when I, like, went to him, I was like, Daddy. And, like, that was, like, the most special moment for him. Like, my dad's been through a lot in his life. Um, and he's absolutely amazing like I can't even begin to tell you guys how amazing he is but um he literally left all of his life before and what he was doing and and, and how he lived his life and decided to become my dad at the age of about 21 so um it's a much of it's a it's a much stronger story than people would understand so people when they come to me and say oh like you shouldn't say it like this like you shouldn't like really call him like that is my dad period like there's not there's nothing that anyone can say that will change that like he says he said before that I was his angel and I changed like his whole life and you know he said that he's he spoke to Allah about it at the time and but like, there's a this is much deeper than you guys would like to think so yeah if anyone wants anything like that please don't um because it's none of your business and that is my dad and I love him so much and alhamdulillah I'm so lucky for him um, so yeah, where Islam came in, obviously, um, my mum had always kind of believed in something, but she just didn't know what, like when she was younger, she's always believed in something, but all my family on her side are atheists, like they don't want to hear it when it comes to religion at all, um, which is fine, that's down to them, but, um, my mum's always felt something in her heart for religion, so obviously when she met my dad and she started learning about Islam, um, but she had no real, like, um, she had no you know, connection to Islam beforehand. She'd never learned about it. She'd never looked into it. Uh, she realised how beautiful it was and she reverted quite quickly. Um, this is where it comes in for me where I'm not quite sure. And even my mum, who I did my shahada with last year, is not quite sure about where I stand. If I was already a Muslim, if I am a revert, because I was so young um, and Islam was always introduced to me. It was never pushed upon me. I was never told to be Muslim. Um, my heart just 
just went towards Islam. You know, I learned about Christianity in school. I was really into RS, so I learned about all religions, but Islam has always been like where my heart has been. And I've always thought about Allah, like even before taking my Shahada when I wasn't practicing. Um, so it's difficult for me to know if I have always been a Muslim or if I'd been a Muslim from when I actually took my Shahada, because obviously um, for the first you know, few years of my life, I wasn't brought up with Islam. Um, but like I say, I've always felt it in my heart so deeply, even when I, before I'd taken my Shahada, um, when I wasn't practicing, if anyone had asked me my religion, I would say I'm Muslim, because that's what I've always felt in my heart. But um, last year, my friend was actually taking her Shahada, um, because she learned about Islam through me and other people, and I thought to myself, wait, I haven't actually taken my shahada, like, I'm, I'm just going to do it, because I don't know, I don't know, you know, if, I, if I'm even counted as a Muslim, and I wanted to start practicing, and I've always prayed on and off with my family, I've always fasted during Ramadan, I've always um, celebrated Eid, but I just, you know, I just wanted to make sure, and I have my certificate and everything, that I am a Muslim. Um, so yeah, ever since then, I've been praying five times a day. I put on the hijab about three months ago. I feel like that's when things really have changed for me when I started wearing the hijab. I feel so much more at peace, so much more protected. A lot of people like to say, oh, you're oppressed. You're wearing this for a man. Like, no, I'm not. No one in my family wears the hijab apart from me. Like my aunties, my mom, I'm the only one. I decided to do myself. My dad had never even mentioned it to me. Like I explained in my other video, I genuinely just felt in my heart that I wanted to put it on for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also I just wanted to show people that I am Muslim because, you know, like I said, I am white. I don't look the most Muslim of people. Um, so I want to show people that I'm Muslim and show that I'm so proud of it because honestly, I'm so proud to be Muslim. Like it's my favorite thing. It's the first thing that I talk about to people. Like even before I'd taken my shahada, before I started practicing, you know, I'd always been studying and learning and learning about other religions too so that I can compare the both. Um, and that would always be a point of conversation, like always the first thing that I'd bring up when I meet new people, you know, is Islam. So it's always been properly ingrained in me. And that's probably um, originally because of how amazing my dad is and how strong my dad is and how much I look up to him. And inshallah, I can be more like him when I'm older because um, he's just so amazing and so selfless. And yeah, I just love him so much. The same way as my mum is. If my mum's watching this, mummy, I love you more than anything. But um, yeah, when it comes to Islam, yeah, that was definitely uh, probably my biggest influence. And also when you also look into Islam, that's when you get the biggest influence from the Quran and learning about what a beautiful religion it is, which is why it frustrates me so much when I get these ignorant comments from these people that think they know about Islam, but they haven't even looked into it and they call us brainwashed but at the end of the day they're believing something that they have literally read online in the media who trusts the media but we've actually gone to the book and learned from the original source so how could we ever be brainwashed when we know the real truth to islam you know so yeah that's my revert story i took my shahada with my friend last year we both did it together which was really beautiful um and yeah, um, since then I've been practicing and I'm so excited for Ramadan this year because like I say, I've always kind of um, fasted and done Ramadan and celebrated Eid, but I feel like this year is going to be so much different because I'm actually going to like put my all into it and inshallah it will be amazing and I'll be the best I can be. And I really want to make sure that my whole family together really celebrates Eid like as much as we can because it's such you know a beautiful time for us Muslims and I'm so excited for it so inshallah we all make it to Ramadan and get to celebrate Eid with our families um but yeah I thought I'd just make this quite short and just like a quick explanation of how it all came about um no disrespect to my biological father or any of um my brothers and sisters on his side it's just how things played out you know, he wasn't the nicest of people and that's just the way it played out and alhamdulillah that it did plan out like that and I met my dad and I have the family that I have now because without them I would literally be a mess, like I don't know what I would do without them, especially at this point in my life, without them, you know, I would be lost, so yeah, that's how it all came about, alhamdulillah, it came about like that, oh, and another point to put in, I know a lot of people know this because of my TikTok, but um, my brother Declan, who is from my biological dad's side, he has a different mum to me, he is actually a Muslim, he reverted, I think when he was very young, like, th like 13, early teens, I think he hung around with some Muslims, um, and he reverted, which is so crazy that me and him both turned out to be muslim um it's something that i think um dave would 
hate that we we both ended up being Muslim. But yeah, I think it's so beautiful. And he's starting to practice more. And he has a beautiful daughter, Arabella, who I can't wait to meet, inshallah, after the whole lockdown. Um, and yeah, I feel so blessed to have them as well. And inshallah, I'll be teaching her to pray and all that sort of stuff when I meet her. And I'm so excited. He's already asked me. But yeah, so things really work out in a strange way and obviously Allah is the best of planners and the way that my life has turned out, you know, I only have him to thank for my dad, for my mum, for such a support of amazing family and for Islam. I'm so lucky to have been chosen to come to Islam. Honestly, it makes me so happy. But yeah, guys, that's all I really wanted to say. That's all the story really was. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and please, if you have any money even a pound it would mean the world if you go to the link in the description and give anything you can to our muslim brothers and sisters who are struggling so much right now in palestine i'm trying to raise money for 50 families to get them through to the end of this winter um obviously it's been terrible for them with coronavirus as well so if we can all get together and help them that would be absolutely amazing because if it was our brothers or sisters going through this right now we know how much we'd be doing for them. So we should do the same for our brothers and sisters in Islam. But yeah, I love you guys so much. And thank you for watching again. Bye.